Good morning. Good morning. My name is Mary Davison. I'm just retired from the uh, Baltimore International Seafarer Center. I've been looking forward to being with you all, praying for you all, and um, thank you for providing such beautiful weather. And uh, a welcome to all of you, and especially anyone who may be new here today. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the faults of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God be with you. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Today's reading is from the book of Jeremiah. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker, Aphia, and our sister, Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. When I remember you in my prayers, I always thank my God because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith toward Lord Jesus. I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective when you perceive all the good that we may do for Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. For this reason, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do your duty, yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love, and I, Paul, do this as an old man, and now also as a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I am appealing to you for my child, Onesimus, whose father I have become during my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he's in, he is indeed useful to both you and me. I am sending him, that is my own heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him with me, so that he may be of service to you in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I prefer to do nothing without your consent, in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while, so that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would me. If he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, I am writing this with my own hand. I will repay it. I say nothing about your owing me, even your own self. Yes, brother, let me have this benefit from you and the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I am writing to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read the song with me responsibly at the asterisk. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sin down, and I rise up, and discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places. You are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips. But you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before. And lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. 
It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful, and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you. While I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, and as yet there were none of them. How deep I find your thoughts, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Now large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me, cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able, with 10,000, to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot, then, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. some superhero averted a disaster, but you're curious about the backstory of her superpowers. This is how the publishing and entertainment industry sell us prequels and sequels. And we could really use a prequel and a sequel for today's epistle from Paul to Philemon. What's up with that Onesimus named in verse 10? Was he actually trying to escape from Philemon Philemon? Escape from slavery? Paul's imprisonment might have been 100 miles away from where Philemon lived. 100 miles is a huge distance for someone fleeing slavery on foot, risking capture and punishment at every step. Or was Onesimus hoping that Paul, 
Philemon's Christian friend would mediate in some kind of dispute. Or maybe Philemon sent Onesimus to help Paul in prison, but then Onesimus risked Philemon's anger by lingering too long? Scholars disagree. A prequel would be really helpful. Also, what is Paul asking Philemon to do? Is he requesting or hinting that Philemon should set Onesimus free? And yes, I haven't forgotten, there's a verse that says no longer as a slave, but some people consider that more metaphorical or relational than affecting uh, his legal status. I, scholars interpret this differently. And anyway, did Philemon free Onesimus? Here's where a sequel would be great. But here's what we know. The Roman Empire depended on slavery. Perhaps 35% of the population was enslaved. Whether they endured the dangers and misery of mining or experienced some comfort and trust in a wealthy household, enslaved people were considered property, equipment, things. Yet Paul refers to Onesimus as his child and then his heart. The Greek says guts. Paul's saying by sending Onesimus back to Philemon, he's letting go of his very guts. Verses 10 and 16 tell Philemon to consider both Onesimus and Paul as brothers. Even more striking, verse 13 says Onesimus was useful to Paul in Philemon's place. And 17 says Philemon should welcome Onesimus just as he'd welcome Paul. In other words, these three Christians have become not only brothers, but almost each other's stand-ins. But wait, there's more. Paul mentions agape, love, four times in his first nine verses. Another clue appears in a pun. Onesimus, the name of the enslaved man, means useful. But where our English says, formerly he was useless to you, but now he is useful to both of us, the Greek uses a different word for useful, Christos. Christos is just one vowel different from Christos, Christ. Onesimus has apparently experienced some change of heart, some kind of conversion, while he was visiting Paul, or in prison with Paul. Now, Paul wants Philemon to see Christ himself in Onesimus, and to love him. Paul even says he'll pay Philemon anything Onesimus owes. Scholars aren't sure whether Onesimus might have stolen from Philemon, or did Philemon lose revenue when Onesimus stopped working for him? Or is Paul speaking metaphorically? In any case, Paul concludes, I'm not ordering you, Philemon, but I know you'll obey my wishes and then some. No pressure here. Just kidding, lots of pressure. It turns out that posts about Philemon's next move could go viral. The opening of Paul's letter reveals that Timothy was alongside Paul and the letter will reach not only Philemon, but also Aphia, Archippus, and the church, whatever congregation gathered for worship in Philemon's household. And there's more pressure in Paul's conclusion, which today's reading omitted. Paul concludes that he hopes to visit Philemon in person. Then he passes on greetings from five colleagues. Finally, Prays that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with the spirit of Philemon and his household. So Paul, other church members, and Jesus are all watching Philemon. There's plenty of pressure here. What there isn't is a sequel. Who is there? We don't learn whether Philemon changed his legal relationship with Onesimus. Did he free him or punish him or accept compensation from Paul? 
We also don't learn whether Paul changed his personal relationship with Onesimus, treating him at least somehow as a brother and equal. And if Philemon, who was already a Christian, experienced this further conversion, did his changed behavior include others enslaved in his household? We need a sequel. But in another sense, we do have a sequel. Though we don't know much about Philemon's household church, we do know that the church with a capital C stayed comfortable with slavery for most of our history. We know that those who inherited disproportionate wealth or power or status because of slavery, which in the U.S. typically means white people, are only beginning to hear God's call to repentance and reparation. So what better reading on Labor Day weekend than this epistle to Philemon? On Labor Day, we give thanks for whatever break from work we've enjoyed this summer, relax a bit longer, and pray for renewed energy this fall and beyond. For some, it's a time to give thanks that we're able to work, to support our loved ones and the church and the causes we champion. But it's also a time to remember the work of others, sometimes working in unjust conditions, and those who would like to work but can't. And we should especially remember workers who are essentially invisible to us. My 18 years in port ministry opened my eyes to our invisible brothers and sisters who spend nine months working on cargo ships and only a few weeks a, he a year back home in Asia or Eastern Europe with the families they're laboring to support. Court security, brutal schedules, and pandemic restrictions make shore leave difficult or impossible. Limited connectivity at sea and fear of losing their jobs often prevents seafarers from reporting inadequate provisions or unpaid wages or safety issues. And when a shipboard injury does occur, litigation may go on for years about whether to blame the seafarer, their officers, the manning agency, the ship's operator, the owner. I could go on, you get the idea. Maybe your life has already opened your eyes and hearts to those who work, whose work we rarely see. But poor chaplaincy was a revelation to me. And when I had the privilege of preaching or speaking about court ministry, when I told stories like sitting and praying with seafarers whose crewmate had committed suicide on Christmas Day, I'd feel blessed when someone would say after my talk, I never thought about how seafarers live. But I'd feel even more blessed when they added, and I need to think more now about other invisible workers. When I shop, I'm going to think about those who worked in the factory, who served on the ship, and who drove the truck, and who stocked the shelves to get that product to me. When I eat out, I'm going to think about the wait staff and the dishwashers. How can we seek justice for all these brothers and sisters? For starters, we open our eyes to injustice. Some think we're living in apocalyptic times right now. Well, the Greek apocalypse literally means revelation, showing, uncovering. A time to notice what we've missed before. A time to pray about whether we truly love God above all else, as today's gospel teaches. A time to share in the church's ongoing conversion to God's way of love. To treat all God's children as siblings instead of tools. To act. And like Philemon, we won't act alone. We skipped Paul's concluding verse today, 
but that's where he assures the church the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with your spirit, all of you. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and brothers who are known. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all of the world, for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel of and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Eugene and Robert, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in God's church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, you are invited to name, silently or aloud, prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. us, O Lord, as we all journey through the months ahead together. Help us to walk trustingly in faith with our parish family and to serve one another humbly. May we always be aware of your presence in all we do. Be with Kristen, Zachary, and Jasper, and give them joy and contentment as they travel and return safely to us. Amen. Collect for Labor Day. Almighty God, you have so linked our lives with one another that all we do affects, for good or ill, all other lives. So guide us in the work we do, that we may do it not for self alone, but for the common good. And as we seek a proper return for our own labor, make us mindful of the rightful aspirations of other workers and arouse our concern for those who are out of work. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves and in the world you have created. We repent and be evil that we are. 
that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we have abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. May the peace of God be with you. And also with you. Well, once again, uh, welcome to St. James. Um, I, I am Mary Davison. For those of you who arrived a couple minutes after I introduced myself, I won't go through the whole routine again. Um, but are there announcements from you all? First, I'd like to thank Reverend Mary for being with us um, for the rest of our time without Kristen. We thank you for being here. Um, just a couple things um, that I know of. So next week, this is our last outdoor service for the summer. Starting next week, uh, we will move back to our two services at 8.30 and 10.30 inside in our worship space. Um, and it's also our fall kickoff Sunday next Sunday. So after each of the services, um, will be an event hosted by the sabbatical team. There'll be refreshments provided by them after the 8.30 service is um, some danishes and um, pastries. And then after the 10.30 service, also some refreshments, sandwiches, um, and some other goodies. Uh, we'll also have Sunday school registration next week after both services. And also starting next week, as you can see the lovely baskets that are on display up in the sanctuary, um, we will start selling raffle tickets for the basket event as well. So all that is happening next Sunday, so hopefully you can join us. And then starting on the 18th will be our first uh, Sunday of Sunday School classes will begin at 9.30. Um, all the classes will begin upstairs in the sanctuary with an opening prayer and a blessing of the students, and then we'll dismiss to their various classrooms downstairs here in the nursery area. Um, so if you have any additional questions on that, please see Joan or any of the um, Sunday School team, and please register and be here next week to help us celebrate. Um, are there any other announcements? Gabby, oh, sorry. Um, Marilyn asked me, she said there's lots of volunteer options with Fast Raffles, so we need lots of help. So please sign up. Is there a sign up there somewhere? Is, there's a sign up link. Um, if you, there is a sign up link. Um, we're using signup.com. Um, it was in an email. Um, it's probably in the, in the uh, weekly emails, and I can help you also if you want to sign up right now. Not right now. <laughs> After the service. <laughs> okay, we are in desperate need of coffee, our hosts and hostesses. Um, if we don't get a few more people, we're going to have to drastically cut that coffee off um, because uh, it would be like we're down to almost like every other week um, somebody would have to uh, cover. And it, we've never been this well on hostesses. So if you want this ministry to continue, we need more volunteers. And that will be, start once we start next week, there'll be separate hostesses for after the 8.30 and the 10.30. Right. right. Um, once it was it wasn't too bad over the summer when we had the one service but breaking up into two services um right now we're looking at the possibility of only having copy hour once a month okay so please please if anyone is able to um, sign up to be a coffee host or hostess please do so um see carla if you have any questions are there any other announcements yeah, um, the, uh, it was in the bulletin uh, on Thursday. The scouts are selling uh, camp cards for, to help them with summer camp, and they're five dollars each. They have coupons for five dollars for uh, tractor supply and ACE and great clips, and then there's other discounts as well. So just one use uh, pays for the card, and it'll last through the end of the year. So I have these. I don't. Uh, I can't take anything but half this week. I can. I'll have to share the square device with you next weekend, but 
Um, I do have them if anybody is interested in buying. Did everybody hear that? The scouts are selling camp cards, five dollars each. We see Bill. One last thing, outreach. If you have a college student, if you'd like to send a care package, just let Laura know. So email Laura with the name and address. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do we have any students or teachers here who would like to come up for a back to school blessing? Sunday school teachers count too. Uh, we're getting a separate blessing on the 18th. You can have one today too. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll get one from here. Okay. That's okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and you can, the wording is in the bulletin. Uh, you can follow along with responses in bold. God, as we start a new school year, we have many thoughts and feelings. We may be excited, nervous, happy, uncertain, or some combination of all these things. Help us, we pray, to have joy and peace in our minds and hearts as we start this new year. Make us kind and compassionate toward fellow students, teachers, and friends. Let us pray. On the way to school, I will look for things that bring me joy. When arriving in my classroom, I will bring my teacher and classmates with joy. When my schoolwork feels too hard, I will take deep breaths to find peace and ask for help. When it's time for recess, I will delight in the joy of the Lord. When I notice a friend feeling sad, I will be in the of God's joy. When I feel overwhelmed or scared, I will look for ways to receive Christ's peace. When I go to sleep at night after another day of learning, Praying together, O oh God, our lives are in your hand. Look on us with favor, we pray, as we begin another year. Grant that we may grow in wisdom and grace. Lead us into joy and peace. And help us to trust in your goodness all the days of our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would anybody like to offer thanks for moments in your life, birthday, anniversary, new job, some une unexpected event of grace? Yes. So the 29th was Trip 89's third year anniversary with the, uh, in existence in the so Wonderful. That's, that's really good to hear. My husband was a scouter also. It's, it's great dedication. Any others? Um, then let us pray together at the top of page 8. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they mark this day. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness
The Lord be with you. And God with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love, and so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Son in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Son in the highest. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread gave thanks to you, broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took, as supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ, crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves, a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with James and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We the gifts of God to the people of God. Thank you. 
let us pray. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and the life to come. Amen. And for anyone who may be visiting today, that's the prayer that I say on behalf of those who were joining us online. And now we pray together. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.